The reading today is from Matthew 18, 21 through 35. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Should I forgive as many as seven times? Jesus said, not seven times, but rather as many as 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle accounts, they brought to him a servant who owed him 10,000 bags of gold. Because the servant didn't have enough to pay it back, the master ordered that he should be sold, along with his wife and children and everything he had, and the proceeds should be used as payment. But the servant fell down, kneeled before him, and said, Please be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. The master had compassion on that servant, released him, and forgave the loan. When that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him 100 coins. He grabbed him around the throat and said, Pay me back what you owe me. Then his fellow servant fell down and begged him, Be patient with me, and I'll pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he threw him into prison until he paid back his debt. When his fellow servants saw what happened, they were deeply offended. They came and told their master all that happened. His master called the first servant and said, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you appealed to me. Shouldn't you also have mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you? His master was furious and handed him over to the guard responsible for punishing prisoners until he had paid the whole debt. My heavenly father will also do the same to you if you don't forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, at least we have some sun shining in, friends. You know, it's been, uh, I was having lunch with my dad uh, Thursday, and he was com commenting on how dreary and dark and foggy and, you know, cloudy and everything has been. And so even though it's, what is it, 14 below, at least the sun is shining. So we can uh, kind of uh, thank God for that piece today. Also, just a, a gentle reminder again for our uh, special weekend next weekend as we uh, continue in our series on the book of forgiving we'll be talking about uh, telling the story and naming the hurt and uh, Spencer who's coming his father was uh, a pastor of a United Methodist Church close by to Martin Luther King's church and uh, so those families knew each other so it'll be uh, good to hear uh, some historical uh, richness in in our worship uh, next next week will you pray with me oh holy and loving God we thank you for power of your word and the call on each of our lives to be people who forgive as you forgive us and yet we must admit O oh lord that it's not an easy journey and so we pray today that you would uh, remind us through the gift of this parable how we are to care for one another and respond to one another in the power of love uh, bless us now for we ask this in jesus name Amen. He was driving home from work and uh, noticed the flower shop had some beautiful spring flowers outside, and so he decided to, to pull in and, and pie some flowers to bring to his home. Uh, as he got to the uh, flower shop, he picked out the flowers, and he went in to pay for them, and the woman who was there uh, said to him, um, so, as, uh, as it's your wife's birthday, and the man, as he was getting ready to pay, said, no, it's not a, not a birthday. Well, is it an anniversary? And again, uh, no, it's not an anniversary. And he was receiving his change, and as he was turning to leave and go out the door, he heard the salesperson say, well, I hope she forgives you. I hope she forgives you. Forgiveness, as we are in that journey and thinking about what it means to have the following ethic of, of forgiveness, uh, we begin today by thinking about we're in what we call the season of epiphany. An epiphany is an aha moment, but for, the, for, the, for us in the church, the epiphany season is a season when we remember Jesus' baptism, uh, the gathering of Jesus' family and, and Joseph and Mary and Jesus, how he's growing up, Reminded and growing in the faith. In the same ways, we also in the church have designated this season of epiphany as a season when we 
when we really begin to examine what does it mean to be a Christian and how do we live the Christian life. And in fact, because we live the Christian life, we are a light to others who don't know Christ or who do not live a Christ-like life. In essence, we are a light to the nations, much like the Israelite people considered themselves the light of God to the world. Epiphany is a season when we remind ourselves that we are bearers of Christ's light into the world. And so it's made sense for me in the beginning of this new year to think about the word forgiveness. Now, forgiveness happens, or words like forgive, forgiveness happen in the scriptures 120 times between the Old and New Testament. As we look at the journey of Jesus and his 12 disciples, we, we see that they have now lived together for two plus years when we, when we read this particular story, this particular parable. And you could probably imagine, as the disciples have lived together, that it's not always gone smoothly. Can you imagine that with me? You know, thinking, if you were traveling with Jesus, and it was 12 people, okay, these 12 disciples, and they're living together, and they're traveling together, you think they rubbed each other the wrong way every once in a while, that somebody might have said something that wasn't helpful? I mean, we remember in the story where one of the the two of the disciples, John and James, asked Jesus, you know, well, who's, the, who's going to be the greatest disciple? Well, that probably didn't rub all the other disciples too well. Or, or it leads up to this, this question that Peter asks. There's this conversation around, well, well who, who is better than the other? Or how are we supposed to forgive others? Or when we are hurt, what happens? And then, Jesus, or then Peter asks the question. So, Lord, you know, I've been hurt. Somebody said something to me. How many times should I forgive? And, you know, I think Peter was thinking seven times was pretty generous. I think he was thinking, man, I think I'm going to get an A on the answer I'm going to give. Should I do seven times? And Jesus' response must have knocked all the disciples over. Jesus said, not seven times. I'm telling you, 70 times 7. 70 times 7. In essence, he's saying it's unlimited. You know, one of the favorite features on my phone now is, you know, when you text, there's this thing called unlimited texting. Unlimited amount. It seems impossible. And in the same way, Jesus is saying to Peter and the disciples, this group of 12 who have traveled and lived together and probably argued with one another and disagreed with one another and questioned one another and questioned their loyalty to Jesus. This community asks the question of Jesus, so how many times should I forgive somebody who offends me and hurts me? And the response isn't just seven times. It's 70 times seven. Which then leads Jesus to launch into this conversation, this story, this parable, to drive home the point. This is called the parable of the unforgiving servant. And along with that parable, and what we've been reading in a book that we've been kind of looking at together, the book of forgiving by Bishop Tutu and his daughter, we want to use these two resources to help us continually on this journey of creating and understanding and experiencing the gift of forgiveness. Because to be honest, friends, the forgiveness has to happen in this community first. We have to practice that here. Because if we practice that here, then when we leave this place and do business or go to work or encounter other people or live with our families, we'll know how to, how to live as Christ's disciples, how to live an ethic of forgiveness. We think about this parable, and it begins with, with Jesus saying there was a king, and a king was calling all the persons who owed him money in to meet with him. And this one particular person came who owed him an enormous amount. 
In fact, Jesus kind of gives us an image of, it could be, a, you could think of what is the biggest number in your mind? Is it $100,000? Is it being $10 million? Just think of the biggest number, $900 million. That's how much debt this guy had against the king. And the king had the right to sell him, his wife, his children, take all of his property. And in doing so, in doing so, then he, he, uh, he, he takes that sense of, of taking him away, and that's it. But this man falls on his knees, it says in the scripture, and begs for mercy. And the king is moved, as it says in the scripture, to compassion. He's moved to some kind of compassion. And he not only says, hey, I'll give you more time to pay it off. He literally forgives the whole debt. Which must have shocked all of the servants, king's persons who worked for the king. They probably were like, we've never heard of this. The man must have left as he got up to hear the words, I'm forgiven. I'm forgiven this whole debt. And he goes out. And the parable <laughs> says that he goes out and then he finds a guy who owes him a hundred bucks. And he grabs him by the neck and says, pay up right now. And the man, of course, does the same thing. Give me more time. Please be compassionate. Have mercy on me. And the servant says no and has him thrown in jail. Again, notice who in the scripture is watching. There are others watching this unfold and they're like, how can this be? We know a king, our king forgave you a huge debt and now you can't even forgive a hundred bucks. It's a call to the community to think about the role of forgiveness. What does it mean to be a forgiving and loving people of God in our relationships with one another, not only here in the church, in our families, in all those other settings? How many times do we forgive? And it's not easy. And in fact, in the book, it talks about that we have to choose between the idea of reconciliation or retaliation. Because to be honest, oftentimes when we have an offense against us, when we are hurt, our first inclination isn't to forgive. Our first inclination is, is to, to get even, to have that sense of revenge. That's just what kind of swells up in us. In fact, uh, I think there's a little drawing here that'll help us. Uh, in the book, it talks about the revenge cycle and the forgiveness cycle. And it talks about and helps us to see that, you know, when we get hurt or harmed or we have a loss, you can see in the middle there, it, there's, a, there's pain. And then there comes a choice point, a choosing to harm and a choosing to heal. Now, interesting enough, in this parable, that's what happened, didn't it? The king, instead of literally selling that man's family into slavery and throwing him into prison forever, chose to forgive the huge debt. Completely wipe it off. The unforgiving servant went out, bumps into a guy that owes him $100, grabs him by the throat, says, pay me now, and has him thrown into to prison. Retaliation. It's not easy. It takes courage. It takes a deep understanding of what Jesus is talking to us about. To understand this process of choosing to reconnect instead of retaliate. Choosing to say, you know, I'm going to try to somehow build relationships, renew a relationship, as opposed to harming one another. There comes a point of a choice. Choosing to harm, choosing to heal. 
Jesus reminds the disciples who are hearing this parable and thinking, how can this be? How can this be, this, this God? How can this God forgive this much to us? But this God does forgive you and me for everything we've done. And the scripture goes on to say that not only in that setting, but that we are eventually to, to forgive from our hearts. You know, 9-11, that day when 3,000 plus people lost their lives and just seems like an atrocious thing. And, and I can imagine that even today there are people who are having trouble forgiving whatever what happened that day. And in fact, I recall a reporter interviewing uh, a person who had lost a loved one in one of the towers. And trying to comfort this person in the midst of the interview, he, the reporter said, well, hopefully you can find your place of worship where you can experience comfort. And I remember the, the woman saying, I don't know if we can go to church this week because Jesus calls us to forgive and I don't know if we're ready to do that. What Bishop Dutu in the book of forgiving and what Jesus tells us today is that forgiveness is not an easy process. It's very difficult. And yet it is a critical ingredient of what it means to be a Christian. You know, we know that coming to worship is important. We know that praying is important. We know that giving back to God is important. But also unimportant is this ethic of forgiveness. Not only those small moments, those small slights, but also the big ones. They all need our attention. They all need our grace. It's my prayer today that as we continue this journey that we could move to the place where we read the vast words of Jesus when he says, truly to have forgiveness is to forgive from your heart. And that's the goal. That's what we're called to do. So in our relationships and understanding our relationships, we need to experience and understand how do we get to that point of forgiving from our hearts. Now there should be a slide here that will tell us the fourfold path. And that's what helps us in this book and that's what we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks. First of all, he says, Bishop Tutu, is that we're to tell the story. That if we can tell and talk about the hurt, that's the first place. And naming the hurt, how I got hurt, how that offended me, how did I struggle with that. And then we move to a place called granting forgiveness, but this is also recognizing that we all have pains, we all have hurts, we all hurt one another, we all experience pain and struggle in life. And thus we recognize a shared humanity. And once we grant that forgiveness, then we renew a relationship or we release it. We renew or release it. And this is a path that they've experienced in South Africa as they move from a, an apartheid system to a democratic system. That transition was very difficult because there was a lot of pain. There was a lot of people who had lost loved ones, a lot of violence and harm. In fact, there's the story of Nelson Mandela. We know Nelson Mandela, who went on to lead the country of South Africa. But he had, if you know his story, he was 27 years in solitary confinement for trying to overcome the apartheid system. And he got a letter from someone who remembered the day he was released from prison. And he said, my daughter and I were watching on TV as you were released, and we could just see the anger and the hatred in your face. What happened from that person to the one who has shown forgiveness and love in this journey and in this transition? 
And he responded back to that man with these words. He said, you're right. I, I was walking out of there thinking my whole world was done. I was so angry. I wanted to blame everyone that nobody was walking with me in this transition. And then I remembered Jesus' words. How many times, Lord, how many times must I forgive? Seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for the power of this parable that reminds us that we have been forgiven by you. Every week we gather to confess to you our failures and faults and weekly you forgive us. Help us not to go the path of the unforgiving servant, but help us to incorporate into our hearts and lives an ethic of forgiveness. That the first step we make in that choice of reconciling or retaliation is one of forgiveness. Thinking through that process and making that transition and that journey to forgive from our hearts. Help us in this journey together, for we ask this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen.